need First Christian Church in multiple locations as we um, as we meet together, not only across Concord and Northern California, but as we meet from across the country. And so we want to welcome um, all of our visitors. Who are, who are members of the church, but have moved away. And so we wanna <laughs> welcome everyone back home. So thank you, thank you for being with us. As I said um, earlier, um, and I'll repeat it now so that um, everybody can hear, following the benediction, you're gonna be invited to go into um, one of six different um, meet, breakout rooms. And so you'll have an opportunity to chat with each other uh, for a more intimate conversation that will not be recorded, um, but a more intimate time to talk and share with one another. You'll be together for about 45 minutes. I don't expect anyone will stay that long unless you just really want to. Um, I know some of you will have a virtual birthday party to go to. Um, but. Um, but just stay as long as you want to. You can always leave whenever you need to, but stay as long as you want to and, um, and just chat with one another and connect. Just to let you know that we are indeed recording you um, and the video will be up later on um, on Facebook Live, but it will also, it is currently on Facebook Live, but it will also be up um, on our website later on this afternoon. Um, you are all muted at the moment. So when you do want to speak, um, whether you're, you know, it's during signs of life or during prayer time, just press your, um, tool, press your um, uh, space bar, that's the word, press your space bar and that will um, kind of turn you into a walkie talkie. So as long as that's down, you can talk. Uh, as soon as you release it, then you're muted again. Um, you can connect with us throughout the week um, on uh, by joining our mailing list, um, uh, using Instagram to post pictures, um, connecting on Twitter um, or on Facebook. And, um, and you can also just check what's happening online on our website. And Scott has a new thing um, that I want him to talk about, and then I'll get back to the other announcements. Scott, would you tell us about- Yeah, I do, yeah. So um, I stole an idea from the Lafayette Church. Um, and Steve Borgard uh, apparently found this, this site that lets people connect virtually. Um, you know, it's not anything official. It's, it's, it'll be all up to, to uh, the congregation to do, to make um, what we want of it. But it's basically a place where we can um, you know, invite people to, to various things, um, you know, ask for help or to borrow things, um, you know, offer uh, things that we have extra. So, um, you know, I've created a few, a few categories up here, but um, you'll be able to, to add new categories. But basically, you know, if, if your garden overproduces and you want to get rid of those extra tomatoes, you know, normally you just bring them to church. And now you can, uh, since we're uh, away for a while, you can post those kinds of things online. Um, so we'll have the details about uh, how to connect to this in this week's intersections. And um, hopefully it will be, you know, a, a fun way to, to engage and, and, and help with our church family. All right, great. Um, some, some uh, just so people are aware, um, Zoom is acting a little wonky today. People on the East Coast said that it, their their whole worship service wouldn't work so um so just be patient um if i know there are some people who are are in but can't hear us um tr if you if that is your um issue try signing out and signing back in um i'm not sure what else to do um 
they've worked out most of the bugs so that we're at least able to to um, to communicate with each other. Um, other announcements for today, there's an elders meeting at 1.30 um, and there will be a nominating committee meeting this evening, I think at three o'clock um, or this afternoon at three o'clock. Um, there's midweek prayer and friendship time on Wednesdays um, at set from seven to eight. And again, May is Mental Health Month, Mental Health Awareness Month. So be sure to take care of who you are. Um, and so when somebody says, how are you? Ask, how are you really? Not, oh, I'm fine. Because some of us are not fine. Uh, May is also uh, Brain Cancer Awareness Month. And so I have um, made a commitment with, um, with the Morgan family and others to wear gray or a version of gray. I don't have very many gray clothes um, um, all month in honor of, in honor and in memory of Ryan Morgan. And this is also Asian, um, Asian American Heritage Month. And so to all of our members who um, are of Asian heritage, welcome. And thank you for all of the contributions historically and currently that you all are providing um, for our shared life together. If there are, if that is, if those are all of the announcements, um, then let us begin with the gathering song. Scott, are you ready? Uh -huh. Fire, go 
I love when you all surprise me. And um, I knew that you all were planning to do uh, to do another live performance or, or uh, performance with with our band. And um, it's just fabulous. I know that that's a lot of work and I really appreciate it. It's so, so wonderful to hear you all sing together. So yes, big claps for everybody. Um, so it is time for signs of life. Where are the places that you have seen or experienced God's love this week or God's spirit? I have something. Uh -huh. You probably all remember Michelle and Matt Harris Gloyer. They had a baby boy this week. Ah. Hey, can you hear me? Can you yes. tap into the box if you can hear me? Yes, yes. I can hear you. Yep. Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm going to jump ahead to signs of life super quick because we have been trying to log in for the past 20 minutes. Oh my. I not see or hear you until just now when you unmuted me. Wow. I see Leslie's screen and I see Ellie frozen. And that is all. Um, oh my. Okay. Until now. Um, so. That's a sign of life. <laughs> I ever saw one. Okay. Yes. Please join me in the call to worship. <laughs> yes. When we feel isolated and alone, oh God, your word comes to us. I will not leave you orphaned. When we face an uncertain future, the Bible reminds us we walk by faith and not by sight. When we are scared and anxious, we hear your whisper, be not afraid for I am with you. We come to this time of worship, remembering the promises of our God, strengthened in hope and saturated with holy love. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Please pray with me. Most precious God, as we continue to celebrate the resurrection of Christ, we pray that we may be bound together in Christian love and that our faith and fellowship may be a witness through which your spirit will bring others into your church. We humbly thank you for the many blessings you have given us. We ask that we may learn how to truly be Easter people and always remember that we are celebrating Resurrection Day every day. Amen. Now is the time where we can light candles and lift our prayers through that. Lighting a candle is a prayer. When we move away from it, it remains lit, continuing our prayers of thanksgiving and intercession for those in need. Lighting a candle is a parable. Burning itself out, it gives light to others. Lighting a candle is a symbol of love and hope of light and warmth. Our world needs them all. As this next song plays, please light your candles and give light and hope to your prayers. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on
gracious and loving God, we come to you with hearts that need to be opened to your word and to your love. There is so much around us that tears at us and, keep, and causes us to tremble. Keep us ever mindful of your presence and the hope that you have given us in Jesus Christ. Guide us, we pray, as your church, struggling to spread the good news, even in the midst of a pandemic. Keep us focused on the mission and ministry to which you have called us and lead us forward. We know, O oh God, that there will often be bumps and holes in the road along the way. Save us from dwelling on those places when Zoom doesn't work, when our technology is kind of wonky. Save us from dwelling on those things and help us and make us secure in the goals that you have placed before us. We pray for all of your creation, always at odds with one another, where it feels that way. Keep our leaders and those of other nations that this world might truly be as you created it to be a world of peace and hope and love. Hear our prayers for all those who need your tender touch of healing, of peace, of restoration in our lives. Those we name before you each day and those, we, those who are known only in the depths of our hearts. Be with those who mourn, and may we all remember the love and grace that your faithful people have brought to this world. Hear us as we lift up to you the joys and the concerns on our hearts and on our minds. Because it bothers you. Jack McClaskey. Abe and Sammy and John. Caroline and Corinne. Cliff Moore. Joanne Moore. Eric Parker. How does he have surgery this week? Jason and Sabrina. Greg DuBois. Tamiya and Azire. Scott Carlisle. <laughs> uh, and my mother. Beth Planbeck. Mm -hmm. Max Cook. Julie Jenkins. Max Cook. These are our prayers together with those that lie on the hearts of all of your faithful people, which we offer to you in the spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ, who said, not my will, but your will be done. And the one are the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Creator, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Jacob, I saw you earlier. Hi, yes. Ah, there you are. <laughs> Let us know what's happening in worship and worship. <sighs> yeah, so after, uh, good morning, everyone. After this uh, service, um, the children, we've been on our uh, kind of our own Zoom channel uh, for a brief time each Sunday. Uh, and we've been reading out of a book uh, called Holy Troublemakers and Unconventional Saints. It's a very uh, uh, enjoyable read and, and informative as well. Um, and this week, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, transition a little bit. We're going to do some drawing 
uh, and game exercises that are both going to uh, reflect on what we're grateful for during this time, because each week we share something that we're grateful for, and now we're going to do something with drawing uh, and artwork to really demonstrate that. And then we're also going to uh, do some drawing exercises on things that we're looking forward to uh, when shelter in place uh, eventually one day uh, gets lifted. And then as well, we're if time is uh, pertinent, then we will uh, also do some games, uh, uh, small games regarding the book that we've read and, and um, some of the things that we've learned over the last few weeks. So looking forward to that. Um, looking forward to just a brief break on the reading and, and utilizing play as an act of worship. Yeah. Uh, that's what we're doing today. All right. All right. Thank you. God has shown us the meaning of generosity and the beauty of diversity within the create within creation and in the overflowing love of Jesus Christ and in our never ending gift of the Holy Spirit. God has blessed us abundantly and called us to be a community that blesses others through the sharing of our love of our talents and of our material possessions. We want to thank you for continuing to give your gifts to the church. Please remember to include attention Lisa Morgan if you, on the envelope if you are sending a check to the church, but also if you are using the online bill pay option for your, from your bank to, um, to put again, attention Lisa Morgan. And then that way she will, she's the only one who will see, see those gifts. We, several people have been asking about online bill or online uh, apps to pay, and we are looking at that. The finance committee is looking at that. So wait for an announcement about that much later on, but, um, but we're working on it. So let us at this time give with joy and enthusiasm a portion of that which God has already given to us. Let us give with joy to the mission and ministry of our church. Um, at, at this point, Leslie, we were going to, to hear from Tim. Ah. And as he and I, played yeah. Water River Spirit Grace, but okay. I don't see any of them online. No. Okay, so um, so we will just pause for a minute um, so that we can think about, pray about what our gift would be or physically write out that check. Um, but again, thank you for all of that. So we'll just pause for just a second and um, maybe we can Display the words and you can hum along to yourself. <laughs> Water, river, spirit, grace, sweep over me, sweep over me. Recarve the depths your fingers traced in sculpting me, in sculpting me. Amen. By your goodness, O oh God, we have received all things, and all that we have and all that we are, we offer up to you. May these gifts, the tokens of our gratitude, be made complete in our commitment to living transformed lives of service and of love. Amen. Andre, are you on? We are having many technical okay. difficulties today. Oh, you are I, on. Uh, yes, okay. I'm here. Okay. John, chapter 14, verses 15 to 21. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever 
This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Amen. Thank you, Andre. If you love me feels like a setup, doesn't it? Some of us hear that phrase as a challenge to prove our love for someone else. We feel like it is asking us to do something and not just say we love somebody, but to do something to demonstrate our love. Last week, I mentioned the five languages, five love languages developed by Gary Chapman, and they are words of affirmation, acts of service, receiving gifts, quality time, and physical touch. If you love me, you will respond in one of these ways, or so we think. Love is a do word. During these days, we demonstrate our love for one another in a different kind of way. We can't physically come and hug one another. We can indeed offer words of affirmation. We can do things for others. We can go shopping for those who can't. We can spend time together virtually. So there are some ways that we can demonstrate our love for one another. But right now, we stay home for love. We learn new technologies, even when they're wonky, for love. We call each other and write letters for love. It's all about love. In the liturgical calendar, Ascension Day is 40 days after the resurrection, and it takes place a little bit later this week. Jesus stayed for 40 days after the resurrection because of his love for us, because he wanted to be sure that the disciples in the midst of their grief and confusion remembered that love was stronger than death and that the crucifixion was not the last word on a movement that originated in love and would grow because of love. 10 days following the Ascension is Pentecost Sunday, the birthday of the church, when the Holy Spirit comes and fills the disciples. The passages for the last several weeks have been pointing us to the work of the Spirit, haven't they, and the ways in which the Holy Spirit is activated in each one of us. Pentecost Sunday is May 31st, and the season after Pentecost is the longest liturgical season of the year, and it ends at Advent. Now, this text isn't about the liturgical calendar, as wonderfully nerdy as that is for me. It is a passage, however, that reminds us of three things. One, it reminds us that Jesus, that Jesus, that for Jesus, love is the center of the message he has for us. Second, that the Holy Spirit is a gift of love. And third, that advocacy is love in action. Jesus uses verbs that mean love or words that mean friend over 57 times throughout the Gospel of John. Jesus says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. That's it. That's all. But what are the commandments that Jesus gives us? What might those be? Well, they are grounded and centered in love. For me, 
It's remembering that Jesus said, love God, love your neighbor, and love yourself. Jamie Clark Souls, who's the professor of New Testament at Perkins School of Theology in Dallas, Texas, reminds us that it's even easier than that. She says, unlike, say, Matthew, nowhere in John does Jesus command us to go a second mile, turn the other cheek, render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's. Famously, Jesus only gives a single commandment in John, and it occurs in the chapter just before ours. I give you a new commandment, Jesus says, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. He reiterates this in the chapter just after ours. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one, no one has greater love than this, than to lay down one's life for one's friends. God loves us. Jesus loves us. We then are called to love one another. If we fail in love, we fail in all things else, William Sloan Coffin once said. Jesus gives us one commandment. We have one job. That's it. And that is to love. At the end of the day and during each moment of each day, for John, there is really only one question we need to ask ourselves. In what ways did I or did I not love today? Jesus reminds us that love is at the center of his message to us. It is all about love. Jesus knows that he will soon be leaving, but he promises his disciples and each of us that he will not leave us orphaned, unparented, unloved, and unprotected. In response to our love, Jesus asks God, and God will send another advocate, the Holy Spirit. Jesus calls the Spirit another advocate which reminds us sometimes when we forget that Jesus is our advocate as well, that Jesus was our first advocate in many ways. The Holy Spirit is a gift of love. God has already given the gift of love through the death and resurrection of Jesus. And his love, and it is his love, that creates genuine, authentic, and abundant life. The Spirit is the advocate who brings the truth of that love and life to the people in every time, and every time following Easter and all the time, which makes faith possible. The Holy Spirit is our guide, our lead, our reminder. The Holy Spirit abides in us. It is our conscience. It is that thing inside of us that urges us to do the right thing and dissuades us from doing something we ought not do. It is that feeling of God's love for us. The Holy Spirit is also our advocate. It challenges us to be, out, to be advocates as well. Jesus dwells within us the heart of Jesus, the heart of God. It is embodied in the spirit. A friend of mine says it this way, that we are inspirited beings rather than embodied spirits. There is some freedom in realizing that we are indeed inspirited. That is one of the um, origins of the word inspired. To be inspired is to be breathed into. The Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, Ruach, breathed into us like at creation, breathed into us like in the valley of dry bones, breathed into us 
like Jesus after the resurrection breathed into the 11 disciples who were locked in fear. Jesus breathes into us, inspires us to do greater things than he did. Advocacy is love in action. John's gospel calls the spirit the paraclete or the advocate, a term for someone who is called to one side as a source of help. But advocate for who? For whom? In modern context, someone may serve as an advocate in the court system, in the healthcare network, or in an educational institution, while other advocates may press the legislature to act on behalf of a certain cause. We, you and I, can be advocates for essential workers, for frontline workers, for low wage workers who are risking their health and their very lives to provide for us. Companies that are opening this week are putting at risk their most vulnerable employees. While I order a lot of things from Amazon and I use Amazon Smile so the church gets credit, I feel a little guilty when I know that the Amazon driver, masked and gloved as he might be or she might be, brings a package to my house because I know I have contributed to putting that person at risk. We can, we can advocate for those that Jesus identifies as those on the margins, those who are considered the least and the last and the lost. We can advocate for those who need a voice, for those who need additional voices for their voice to be heard. Our voices, our voices, our voices for justice, our voices for love. Eli Wiesel said this, I swore never to be silent whenever and wherever human beings endure suffering and humiliation. We must take sides. Neutrality helps the oppressor never the victim. Silence encourages the tormentor, never the tormented. Love, end quote, love is the center of Christ's message. We must act in love, no matter how challenging and how difficult it might be. When we see an injustice, we need to speak out. The Holy Spirit is that empowerment to do that for us. And the Holy Spirit is a gift of love. When we do that, when we advocate for another, when we advocate for justice, advocacy is love in action. Friends, the whole Christian message is about love. It is all about love. Amen.
again. Um, Chris is um, Chris Rose is supposed to do communion, but because of technical difficulties, um, he is not able to do that. But he did send me his meditation. So uh, what I am reading is what Chris would would have been saying to us. So let us prepare our hearts and minds to receive communion today. It can be hard to get into a spiritual mood when we're attending church from our homes with all of the distractions that they contain. Our communion here does not stand on fancy ritual. We simply gather to eat and drink in memory and love, and in love. There's a story I'd like to share with you about St. Anthony, who was a leader among the desert monastics. As the story goes, three religious men used to go to visit him each year. Two would, sit, would discuss their thoughts about salvation of their, of their souls with him, but the third kept quiet and never asked a question. Abba Anthony said to him, you often come here to see me, but you never ask me anything. And the other man replied, it is enough for me just to see you, Father. One of the great needs of our consumer-oriented society is a sense of enough. And our time around this table helps us, to, helps us with this. It is enough for us to be here, to know the sacrifice that brought us here, and of the spiritual resources available to us. We do not fancy up the service because we do not need fancying up ourselves. We need simplifying. We need the bread of life and the cup of salvation. And here they are. It is enough. Please pray with me. God, whose desire is that all of your children live together in peace and that none should be hungry. We offer up our thanks to you for the gifts before us. As we break bread together, may we be nourished by your spirit so that we may share it in the days that are to come. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And on the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. And after having given thanks, he blessed it and he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is given for you. Each time you eat of it, do so in remembrance of me. In like manner, after supper, he took the cup. And he said, this is the cup of the new covenant poured out in my blood. Each and every time you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. Ministering to you in the name of Jesus the Christ, I offer you this bread and this cup. Let us eat and drink together.
Following the benediction, you will be invited to go into a breakout room. You'll get a little message on your, uh, on your screen that invites you to join the breakout room. Go ahead and click join um, if you want to do it, obviously. Um, and again, we'll keep the room open for about 45 minutes. Stay as long as you would like. Um, but feel free to leave whenever you need to or want to. And now receive this benediction. Be of a loving spirit, a tender heart, and a humble mind. Do not return evil for evil or harm for harm, but pursue peace and justice. Have no fear of those who trouble you. Defend yourself with gentleness and respect, and have the mind in you that was in Christ, and Christ shall go with you. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. up the room.